Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me again. Um, today is Resurrection Day Sunday, and as many refer to as Easter, um, but we want to remember what Jesus did for us on this day. And it's such a beautiful day. I just want to sit outside in my backyard and just to come on and talk to you for just a moment. Um, and just kind of reflect on my day. I just thank God. First of all, just for the sacrifice that he made for me. I thank God that I have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And not just me, he didn't die just for me, but he died for the sins of the entire world. And I'm so grateful, you know, that he did that for me. God has always been a faithful God and I don't want to um, not receive a free gift that he has given to me and then show appreciation for it because he literally saved my life and my soul. And I'm just truly grateful. I thank God again for this beautiful day. It was raining yesterday and um, kind of cold. Kind of cold this morning too, but it kind of warmed up. Um, it's not usually this chilly uh, in April, but, but it's kind of nice now. But I just wanted to get on again just to just talk about the goodness of the Lord. I went to service this morning, went to worship service, and it was, of course, awesome. God showed up um, the way he always do. And it was just a beautiful, beautiful service. I just thank God again just for the reminder of what he did for me. And, and Jesus Christ being so willing to give his life. And even when he was afraid. And when he prayed and he prayed, like, God, if it be possible, let this bitter cup pass from me. And then almost within the same breath, he said, nevertheless, not my will be done, but thy will be done. So him being fully human and fully God, he was still able to show that, you know, he was afraid also of the pain that he was about to endure. And even him understanding the pain that he was about to endure, he wanted to go through with it for us and also to be obedient to the Father. And even on the cross, when it got so painful after they had spit on him and they had pierced him in his side and they had mocked them and no doubt called him all kind of names and, you know, you're Jesus, King of the Jews. You know, and of course they was not saying that in a complimentary way or in a respectful way. It was to mock him. But yet he was on that cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He was determined to sacrifice himself in order for us to live. And not that we were good and we were perfect at that time. He sacrificed himself not only for the people that loved him and accepted him, but he was sacrificing himself for the ones that spit on him, the ones that hated him back then and even the ones now. So the Bible said in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So he gave himself for the entire world world what a love there's no greater love than that that type of love that someone will lay down themselves or lay down their lives for a friend even but he didn't do it for friends he did it to people who actually hated him and that says a lot about the god that we serve he had no guarantee that we will ever accept that sacrifice. But he did it anyway because he knew that some people would do it. But we all have access to him because of that sacrifice that was made. And I'm just, I'm just grateful and I'm just overwhelmed just thinking about what he went through on that Friday night and all that he endured. And then how Peter even came and Peter you know, cut the man's ear off and 
you know, all the things that they did trying to defend Jesus. And Jesus said, look, hold up, wait a minute. I don't need you doing all this for me. Don't you know that if I really needed some help, I can call angels here to come and help me in a second. I don't need your help. So he knew what he was doing. He was intentional about what he was doing. He had to die for me. He had to die for you. But that wasn't the end of it. If he just died, it would not have been powerful. We would not have been redeemed. We would not have been freed and delivered from the yoke of sin and bondage. But the fact that he got up on that Easter morning, man, and he said he rose with all power in his hand. Wow, and that's what we celebrate today, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it's because, it's because of that death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that we are free today. Free from what? We are free from condemnation. We're free from shame. We're free from hell. <laughs> we're free. We, we're free. And I'm just, I'm just grateful for that. And I just want to thank God just Just for what he did for me. Just for me. Like the song said, they hung him high, they stretched him wide, he laid his head. For me, he died. That's love. Man, nothing else can compare. I don't care what else you try to go and replace with Jesus. Man, you're not going to find that type of love anywhere. I can promise you that. There's nobody that's going to be willing to give themselves, give them, give their lives for you. When you spit on them, <laughs> when you curse them, when you reject them, there's nobody else that's going to do that. But he did that for us. He did that for us. And I know it was the people back then that they, they crucified him, the ones that were, you know, praising him and yelling, Messiah, Hosanna, you know, and then that same week or a week later, then they were saying, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. We want Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. We want Barabbas. Crucify Jesus. And I have to be honest, that, that's been me. That's been me in my lifestyle, you know. Just in the way that I lived, I rejected him. I did things that was completely contrary to his word. But I love it that he knew I was going to do all of that. And that's, that's why he died. And so that's why we don't have to feel guilt or shame. Because that's who he was doing it for. That's what he was doing it for. Because we were sinners and we were wretched and we were undone. We were ungodly. And he knew that we needed a sacrifice. No longer did rams and bulls and whatever else. The animal sacrifice just couldn't do it. It was not powerful enough. We needed a sacrifice that was greater than any other sacrifice. And what greater sacrifice than God will come down himself in human flesh, to suffer on a cross, to hurt, to be in pain, to be embarrassed, to be humiliated, to be mocked, just because he wanted to save his people from their sins. And the fact that he said they don't know what they're doing, Lord, forgive them. God, <laughs> I mean, who can do that? Right? If somebody was beating you up and, and uh, spitting on you and stabbing you and just doing all kind of things to you would you say during that painful moment god forgive them for they know not what they do would you say that wow mm -mm. i couldn't say that but jesus did because he knew what the ultimate goal was and he said they didn't know what they were doing because they did not realize that even they needed a sacrifice and he was going to be that sacrifice that they needed. Wow. So I'm so grateful that my eyes were finally opened. 
and I was able to see and not only see, but to accept the sacrifice that God made for me. I hope you're happy too. Aren't you excited that we don't have to live in this life without God? Aren't you excited that we have access to him? Because the Bible says that the the veil was ripped in two. And back then, only certain people could go behind the veil and talk to the Lord. Only certain people. You had to be a, of a higher stature to be able to go uh, and worship or talk to the Lord behind that veil. But no longer. After that, he said that veil was ripped in two from the top to the bottom, giving me access to the throne room of God that I can go to him for myself. I didn't have to call on a priest. It wasn't the priest that was able to go in, just the priest able to go in into the Holy of Holies and talk to the Lord. We didn't have to bring the rams and the goats and the bulls and whatever else or talk to a man in between. We don't have to do that anymore. We can go directly to God. And it does not matter where we are, and that's what I love. I don't have to be in a church building. You know, I don't have to be in a synagogue or a mosque or whatever else. I don't have to be in any of those type of places. I can be right here in my backyard and have complete access to God. I can just call on him and he'll be right there. I thank God even right now, his Holy Spirit is surrounding me. His presence is already here. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful for all the things that he has done for me. I'm grateful for the birds. I'm grateful for the trees, the grass, the wind. I'm just grateful for the air that I breathe. I thank God for the, even the slight wind um, that's blowing. I'm happy. I'm happy in Jesus. And I'm just grateful. And I know when it got really, really bad on the cross, he began to pray to God, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabbathana, being interpreted, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But at that moment, it's like God has shut down access because it was sin. Jesus took on all the sins of the entire world. All the sins of the entire world was on him at that moment. And I know he felt forsaken at that time. But it was all part of the process. It was all part of the process. And then finally when it was done, he said, It is finished. So he was able to accomplish what he needed to accomplish. To redeem me back to the Father. Nobody oh, didn't stop there. Like I said, that resurrection Sunday morning, it was on the Easter, which was a holiday that was already uh, being celebrated during that time. But it just so happened Jesus was raised on Easter Sunday. Hallelujah. Again, with all power in his hand. Why I'm grateful. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. He conquered death for us. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I, I don't really want to get really deep. I just wanted to just talk to you for a moment and just reflect on the goodness of the Lord. And I love it, though, that no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, because of this day right here, not Christmas. Oh, yeah, we're grateful that Jesus was born around Christmas, around December or September or whatever. Yeah, we, we, we're very grateful that he was born for sure. But it's the resurrection. It's the resurrection that was able to redeem us and give us access back to the Father. And so I love this day. And just want to celebrate this day and celebrate my freedom. 
So again, no matter what you've done, no matter how bad you feel like you are, how bad you messed up, you know, you didn't get it right, you messed up, you did all types of sins, and I mean, you've done it all. We've done it all. So don't you dare think or let anybody else make you think that you are a hopeless call. Understand me when I say it's because of you that he came. He didn't come to, to, to bring the righteous back to him. He came for the sinner. He came for the sinner. Because the sinner understands and realizes their need for God. Right? The sinner understands that they need a savior. He came for you. In your rotten, nasty, sinful, stinking state. Oh, you are at the right point for God to come in and save you and use you for his glory. Yeah, you. Yeah, the one who thinks that they have nothing to offer God. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it because you know, even in the Bible day, they thought they could, they could come and just give a certain amount of money and just kind of buy, you know, the things of God or buy the spirit of God or, or whatever. It don't matter how much money you have. There are no elites in the body of Christ. In fact, if you're going to be among, among the elite, if there were uh, an elite, you will be a simple servant. Yeah, totally, totally uh, contradictory to a lot of uh, how a lot of churches operate and um, how a lot of people even think yeah, you are not an elite you know if you are elite again you are a servant yeah you are a servant so it doesn't matter how much money you have it doesn't matter your background it doesn't matter you know again what side of the tracks you were you were born on it, it doesn't even matter We are all on level playing ground. You're no better than me. I'm no better than you. So God wants to save all of us from the least to the greatest. And the thing about it is, from the least to the greatest, we need a Savior. We need a Savior. Because I tell you what, we do not, we do not want to meet the Lord when he come back to judge the world and we have not given our lives to him. And I think for me, it's, it's, it's past that point for me. It's for, oh my God, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to serve God because I'm afraid I'm going to go to hell. I don't even think about that. I just think about, I just got this beautiful relationship with him. He has given me so much. He has made my life beautiful not with things, material things, and just just the, having access to him, just having a relationship with him. He has made my life beautiful. And so that's what I, I don't want to disappoint him. I don't want to let him down. I don't want to fail God. I don't want to sin against him. But at the same time, I'm grateful that if I do sin, that if I do sin, when I sin, because <laughs> I will sin. So don't let nobody tell you because you're a Christian that you won't sin. We're human. But I'm thankful and grateful that I have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, he's the mediator between God and man. And he goes and he pleads my case, you know, and I'm all right. Because God is faithful and he's just to forgive me from all of my sins and restore me back to him. And that's just a lifestyle. That's a lifestyle that I, I live. That's a lifestyle we are to live. Again, not being fearful of God in that way. Yeah, respecting him. Respect God. But do understand that, honey, he has the power to, to kill you like that. <laughs> so that does bring about a certain amount of fear. But... I don't want a fear-based relationship with him. I don't have a fear-based relationship with him. I have a loving, 
relationship with my father. And so that's how I live. That's how I live. Just being who he called me to be, just being who um, he ordained me to be, preordained me to be. I'm just going to walk in that, you know. Because sometimes we get so caught up in trying to live in this box or checking all the boxes, I should say. Not understanding that God called you because of exactly who you are. Your personality, oh yeah, he can use that in the kingdom. He can definitely use that in the kingdom. So, again, I don't really have much to say, I guess. <laughs> but, because it was such a beautiful day, I just wanted to get on and just talk about the Lord on this Resurrection Sunday and this beautiful, beautiful day. Again, I hope that you are remembering him and the sacrifice that he made for you. And I pray that there is no condemnation that you feel. Because the Bible says there is therefore no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. What is condemnation? Making you feel like you are nothing. You're worthless. You're trash. You're too bad to... to you know, for God to have anything to do with, you know, because of a certain thing that you did or certain behavior that you had, that you're just bad, 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 bad. Mm -mm. The Bible said that Jesus did not come to the world to condemn the world, but he came to the world that we all might be saved. So why Jesus come to the world? That we all might be saved. So his intentions were good and out of love. That was the intention of Jesus. Again, regardless of whether the people wanted him or not, he knew what they needed. He knew what we needed. And I'm telling you, I'm so grateful Hallelujah. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful that he did it just for me. Amen. Well, thank you so much for taking this time just to sit with me for a moment. I'm going to go back in the house and do something. <laughs> I don't know what, but just finish enjoying this day and this time. But I wanted to just dedicate some more time to God by doing this video. But this is ministry for me. And just to remind you, of who he is and why he came. He came to save a wretch like me. And I'm so truly grateful. I can walk in freedom because of the sacrifice that he made. I can walk in freedom because God sent his son Jesus Christ to die. And he got up. So I tell you again, he is risen. Just as he said, he is risen. So go about your day and remember, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works, but give God the glory. Amen. Talk to you soon. Bye.